welcome to the Film Mechanic Screenwriting Podcast with Derry Titan. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Derry Titan, and I am <laughs> sitting here today. Y'all heard the woohoo. I can no longer hide it from you because we are here with Maggie Bush, one of the premier writers one of the premier filmmakers, directors, you can call her an extraordinary slash. She has so many components to her. I can't even, you know what? Is I always do this, y'all. Y'all know me. I have to let her tell y'all about her herself. What's up, Max? What up, Derry? What's going down? <laughs> well, hello, everybody in the film mechanics world. Um, you are in for a treat today. My name is Maggie Bush. I am a Afro-Latina writer, producer from Chicago here in Atlanta. Um, a little bit about me. I got my degree in journalism. I am currently a script coordinator at Tyler Perry Studios. I'm a filmmaker and producer with E-Trade Productions. And um, yeah, I'm here to just chop it up with you, Derry. Look, so look, Max, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we even jump into that, what's some projects mm -hmm. that you've done that they may have or may not know about? Some projects that I've done. Um, so currently I work for Tyler Pierce Studio. So I'm I'm on all the shows there. So I've been on New Medea Homecoming. I am on Sisters. I'm on Bruh, my young Dylan. I'm on all those fun shows there. Um, outside of that, I also um, write commercials for Ford and for Home Depot and for places like Ardent and um, Trino all up in Chicago. So yeah, I'm all over the place. <laughs> oh, you know what? I love it. Uh, so many people that's going to listen to this podcast and that's listening to this podcast is going to always ask the question, like, how did she get there? Right. But it's not about how did you get there? More importantly, is what did you do to get there, right? Being a writer ain't sexy. It's a lot of loneliness, a lot of um, giving up time with your family and, you know, having to manage a job as well as writing. So right now I'm blessed to work full time as a writer. But before this, I mean, I started my journey 10 years ago and having to get my bachelor's degree because um, I, uh, I was a wife and a mother of three. So I had to finish school while working at Northwestern Memorial Hospital, running the transplant clinic there for, you know, three days a week and then getting my bachelor's degree and blogging and, and none of that was cute, you know, so I had to put in all that time before I even got to where I'm at now. So, and I always start, you know, the podcast off with, you know, with this one question, to structure or not to structure, <laughs> What's the big deal? To structure, not to structure. For sure, you need to um, make intentional time for your writing. Kind of like I have to make intentional time to work out in the morning, although I don't want to. <laughs> so for me, it the structure for me is just more the intentional time. Like it doesn't matter. I have to put in this time to write and to uh, perfect my craft. Um, I got my degree. I had to finish my degree online. And, you know, <laughs> that in itself, it's its own thing. You have to, no one's motivating me. No one's sitting here telling me what I got to do. Um, I got a syllabus and I just got to do what I got to do. I freaking did a paper while the next day when I got my gallbladder removed, I had a, a final due. I was like, bring me my laptop. So I'm at the hospital finishing my final. I had to put in the work and I know like all that taught me was discipline yeah. so to be a writer and to do all that is takes discipline yeah so so when you're writing mm -hmm. right and all of the discipline and you know you know you see the fortitude in there where what space you know influence you the most you know, in terms of what you write and how you write. Okay. Like as far as like a setting or. Yeah, like a setting. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for me, I, so I, I've met a lot of writers who feel like, oh, I have to be motivated to write or 
they have to be in their certain room and have their certain tea. I never had that luxury. I really wrote a lot of my stuff while I had a colicky baby sitting right next to me. Um, so for me, it was more of a mental space than a physical space that I had to always go. And um, a lot of that would be either putting some motivational music on or, or something to, to tune out the noise. And um, cause I had tons of noise around me. So for me, it was not a physical place, but more of where I had to take my mind. And a lot of that is you, you spoke earlier about affirmations and having to tell yourself certain things. It is regrouping and, and having the end goal in mind. So that kind of was the space that I was always in. So for me, if you can imagine as storytellers, you can see the end, the, the, the finale, the final act in my mind. And that's what kept me going. People are always looking for a comfortable, quote unquote, physical space to write in. And a lot of times when they do even get in that space, they still find they, themselves outside of that space, washing dishes, uh, mopping the floor, folding <laughs> folding clothes that's been sitting on the couch for the last almost three days. You, you understand what I'm saying? But yeah. it's really a, a really a mental thing. So even after you write, even after you, you I know you got this baby right here. You got to fix dinner. Mm-hmm. You, you got to fold clothes, but you mm-hmm. didn't make this time to write in your mind. So you got to, you know, this is just the first draft. What's the biggest issues that you have with write, like in your rewriting process? Like when you're sitting down and you're about to rewrite, like something you've written, like what does that process look like for you? The rewriting process? Um, so for me, okay, so the first getting it all out is my first thing as a writer. Like I get everything out and then I, ha- I go back and say, who is this story for? What am I trying to say? You know, so then I'm finding the, the holes in it. And a lot of times people call themselves a writer and don't even know format or structure that after a certain page, certain things are supposed to be happening, right? So for me, I go into the technical aspect of rewriting first, I go into, okay, so I'm on page seven, this should be happening. Where's my arc, all these things. And so I'm, I'm bulleting, I'm outlining and I'm, then I'm asking myself, okay, uh, what is the best way to tell this story? If this is a father and son journey, is it the best way to tell it is in a clownfish who meets a blue friend? Is it finding Nemo? Is that a good way to tell this story? Or is it, about, um, is it biographical, like uh, father and son story of pursuit of happiness? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to not only get the technical aspects of it, but also the difficulty for me is finding the approach of how I wanna tell the story. Who is this for? Am I gonna highlight a social injustice like hidden figures? Or am I, am I gonna talk about like, a group of men who hate their job and think their boss is getting in the way like horrible bosses. You know, like I, I, I'm always trying to find creative ways, but also stick to a formality that makes my story not boring. Cause I've read plenty of screenplays and scripts that on page 60, I'm done. Like nothing has happened. So that happens with lack of structure. So for me, that rewriting is structure. And then rewriting, as you say, is rewriting. (laughs) So look. So (laughs) go ahead. You you said I wanted I want to say something. You said some and because you said by a certain page. You said that because that's the mechanic, that's the that's the format of it, right? That's yes. So what is structure? Yeah, I mean structure for me is there are certain. So what people don't recognize when they watch a film is that you're being taken on an intentional ride, right? So the, the films that fail is because by page seven, you're, you're already supposed to have, actually by page the, the your opening should be something enthralling that makes me want to watch, pass it, that hook, right? And then 
by page seven, other things are supposed to be happening. By page 18, other things are supposed to be happening, right? So then for me, what I start doing is after I write it, I have all these stickies and I'm like, here's my arc. And okay, nope, I have to bring this here because this should happen earlier, you know, because there is a mood of feeling, it's a cadence to your writing that we um, as writers learn. But a lot of people who say they're writers, are writers in a form, but they're not the technical writers that will take that make you watch a film and like, oh my God, I can watch Titanic for three hours because it's taking me for a ride. And that's very much intentional. Like the outline is important for me. Outlines, beats, um, character development. My favorite thing there is characters, like how to find the freaking perfect protagonist. For me, the average person who's given powers and gifts and then all of a sudden is given a task or a, a mission, that becomes like, holy smokes, I can see myself in that average person or, or an exceptional person who's given a big charge like T'Challa, who's already a freaking king. Now he has to, to go off to the snow king or whatever. You know, those are just, just two major aspects of your characters, right? You're just like, whoa, how, how is Spider-Man a regular freaking kid, awkward teenager, now all of a sudden it was an orphan, now gets bit by like this radioactive whatever spider thing, now he's fighting crime, right? So now you're seeing yourself into these people, right? But really a lot of that structure comes from, you know, you know the mechanics of it because you teach the mechanics of it. There are definitely page counts and stuff like that, that I'm willing to share with people like, hey, if you want me to read your script, I'm going to tear it up and tell you, okay, but bring this up, pull this around. Outside of the mechanics of it, what is your story about? Like, who is this person? How do I connect with this person? You know, that to me is also a very, very important thing. So after I do that, I also do my show Bibles. Um, and my show Bible for the story before I even start writing, after I beat it out and outlining, for me personally, I do um, show Bibles I uh, for my character development. This is the journey that this character is going. This person ties into this person. So that even if I want uh, some help writing, mm -hmm. we have the same voice. You know what I mean? You know where this person is going. I can put this person in, in an ice cream shop or, or in a barber shop and they should be speaking the same. Mm -hmm. um so a lot of that is it comes with time and repetition and and you may not get it out the door some people can be a ryan coogler and and fruitvale station and, and be a success after their first film others are not you know and that's okay too yeah i think one of the things of it is 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 it's so weird that you you talk about the mechanics of it and when I talk, one of the things I had to break down in screenplay writing, when screen in screenwriting was, I had to understand there was four major parts, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a scene heading, mm -hmm. action line, mm -hmm. character, mm -hmm. and dialogue. Mm -hmm. and that's it. Now, that's what, it. You, what you do with those four things is up to you. Now, you have these ancillary things like, you know, like a montage, you know, you have uh, uh, you have uh, transitions, mm -hmm. parentheticals, mm -hmm. shots. You know, you could put on a shot selection if, if it's a in, which is a zoom in, which is a zoom shot or a close up shot. So you have all these ancillary things that can kind of help, you know, right. fill out the screenplay and maneuver it. But Maggie, it you you don't even understand. Like, you know, some of the things that you 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 discuss is those things are so important to every single screenwriter. That is the breakdown, the development of your character. Yeah. The development of your character. Like if you break your story down, I, I have a question. I'm not going to ask you this, but I do uh -oh. have a question where, because I, I, I ask all the guests different questions, but I, you uh -huh. know, but this is a question, which comes first, the story or the character? Oh, shoot. So for me, I don't know. I'm always seeing the person first, the character first mm -hmm. for me. And then like, cause I can put that character anywhere. 
And once, if I, if I developed this person, so I, I wrote a, a thriller and um, which I'm so proud of, won the Montreal Film Festival and Toronto Film Festival. Yay. Who knows? <laughs> and, Who knows? and we are getting distribution on her, but I sing her in so many different spaces outside of the world that I put her in. I seen her in so many places. I seen her in other people and the people that I met in the streets and the people that I seen at the hospital. And for me, I wanted to develop a world for her. So for me, the character was most important. I'm not sure other people may have other opinions, but. No, 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 no. It, <laughs> that's, that's what the film mechanics is. It is watching every process. Like, you know, like the, the book is the film mechanic screenwriting workbook. And it's like a screenwriting process that sells a, not the, a screenwriting process that sells. And the reason why I do that, and the reason why I do this podcast is because I want writers to understand every journey is different. How we see mm-hmm. our, how we develop our scripts is different. Stop mm-hmm. looking at movies and saying to yourself, I want to write like that. Then you go and you read the screenplay and you but you you try to write according, but that's not your process. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? A like, lot of people, a lot of people will pick their theme first. You know, like theme comes first. What do I want to talk about? Mm-hmm. And you know, so and I get that too. So that's also very much important. But for me, I don't know. I just I just love I love character development. Jerry, out of anything as a writer, I think I just that is my favorite aspect is developing a world around human people you know what I mean my favorite film is Maleficent because part of it is that she was this protagonist who they a villain and then she became human when she fell in love with this human being and then you can see the human aspects of her that show textures and layers that there's more there's good and bad and bad and good you know what I mean? So I just, I don't know. I just love characters. Character no. development is my favorite thing. So let me ask you this question out of everything okay. that you've written, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's your most proud moment of your writing career? Well, one of the proudest moments that I've had was when we finished filming my thriller. Um, there was a moment that there was a, the plot twist, right? When everyone was able to see it and they got it. You know, that was one of those moments that you're like, you know, like you tricked them. Like it was the ultimate thing that, oh, shoot, you thought she was going this way, but she actually went this way. And then it all started to make sense. And then people started to replay her moments and and start processing everything that she said, because all of it was so intentional, but you didn't realize that. So for me, that was one of those wonderful tearjerker moments for me is that I was talking when I had her voice when I was her writing voice she was very much like how you and I are talking and then people will all of a sudden were like they see themselves in her and then when they start replaying everything they're like oh shoot when she said this that meant that you know it was one of those humanistic moments that I just I was just very grateful experience with the audience and and those who were actually in the film it was one of those moments that I'm like thank you God you really took me on this journey with this character with this person who I researched and and tried to make sure that she was as authentic as possible and the fact that it played out just how I seen it in my head because a lot of times we have a lot of different thoughts in our heads Mm -hmm. which is why it's important to get all your stuff out just get all your thoughts out first and then organize that crap later Mm. (laughs) but that was one of my proudest moments man so as a and and i know i'm way over the questions but this is such (laughs) a good conversation so as a you said something but i'm gonna i'm gonna gonna put a pin in that real quick um but as an Mm afro-latina um writer like is is the main character Afro because I know you write about Afro Afro Latina, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yes, no, my so I actually wrote a general market film. Um, so my general market, for those who don't understand, means you have a Caucasian main star. So <laughs> 
Um, and Cass Seegers, um, who is my mentor, directed it for me. So we wanted to show the world that Afro-Latina women of color can also write things outside of Black traditional films. Mm -hmm. um, but I did write um, Mixed Emotions Volume 2, which is on Amazon Prime. And that is about an Afro-Latina. She's definitely, it's kind of like a pseudo journey of Eugene and I uh, being Puerto Rican and Black and my husband being African-American and, and the colorism that we faced. Um, and another thing, a sidebar really quick. How I even got here is because a lot of times as writers, people don't know you're a good writer. So it's important for people to see that you're a writer. So my husband and I were very intentional, e -Trade Productions, very intentional of producing all of my writing. So I've written over a dozen shorts and we play them with screening rooms here all over the place. And that's how I even got my mentor to say, hey, do you have any projects? I was like, sure, I absolutely do. So be ready, write your scripts, even though um, you don't know where it's going to go, but Someone may ask for a thriller or a sci-fi and you'll be ready for it. Um, so do that. It ain't cute either to just write and it's just sitting in your Dropbox. But you never know for such a time as this, somebody will have some funding for you. But um, yeah, Afro-Latina, I mean, colorism was very hard for me growing up being Puerto Rican and Black. Um, I experienced a lot of that hate within my own Hispanic side of the family. I wasn't black enough. I wasn't Hispanic enough. So a lot of times when we write from those spaces of hurt, you turn that pain into purpose and then you can bring people into the world. And then, you know, you're like, oh shoot, I can see myself in that. Those make the best stories for me. Oh yeah. And it's, I was, and I wanted to just, you know, bring that up and to um, I, I really mentioned that because the idea of so many other people are so they feel like they need to write one way mm. and that is what they are familiar with mm -hmm. and a lot of times even myself I'm I'm kind of uncomfortable with writing a male Caucasian lead like mm -hmm. I am I'm gonna be honest I am but that does not take away from the fact that I could not write that because Derry I'm sure you could yeah, when you're, yes, when you're, yeah, but when you're, but see, when you're, when you're writing universal, universally, thematically, it becomes easy because they're ex everybody's experience and saying, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Like, like as a, as a, as a black male, as a black man with a three year old son, I reached down to tie his shoes and he frizzled my hair. Right. That's like a, that you see how you just smile. That's a, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. You hear you have a Chinese man. He has a three-year-old been down tash and his son frizzled his hair. It's the same, it gives the same exact thing. Like yeah. anybody that's watching that, a Caucasian man or an Indian man, anybody that's watching that, that and this happens to them, it gives you the warm feeling of fathers and sons. That's it. That's you, it. you see what I'm saying? It, it just gives you that. So when you're writing universe, and, and what helped me to understand that more than anything was it's a book uh called uh, The Golden Thing by Brian mm -hmm. McDonald. And um, when I read that, that's what he talks about a lot. He talks about like that that one thread where everybody's connected, no matter who mm. you are, how you mm. how you see how you mm. see mm. people mm. interact with each other thematically. Like it gives you that it gives you the same feeling. Everybody yeah. experiences the same kind of way. Yes. So um, that yeah. thread that you're talking about, if it, it sounds like a. It's, it's your heartstrings. Yes. It's whatever that is that tugging at a, as a human, as, as people, as fathers, we may do things a little bit differently, but the intention and the soul of it is very much the same. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it, which is the same thing when you see, you know, a mom who is talking to her pregnant daughter you know, mm. who's helping her pregnant daughter. It's the same thing. When you see it, you know it. You know what that's like. You you know what that's caring, it's, it's the word care. You know what caring looks like. Mm. You, if, you've, if you've experienced it, you know what it feels like. You see what I mean? So that's the biggest thing. So um, 
Mm -hmm. Mamex. Oh, this is so fun. I know we could do this. We could do this forever. So, well, look, we got to get look before we go because we got to okay, get out. Because okay. I'm, I'm, I know I don't want to take up too much time. I know you're on the East Coast. It's late. So, look, what's your gold? What are the nuggets of wisdom that you carry with you on this writing journey? Mm, 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 mm. So, I read this somewhere. Um, I can't even remember. So if, if someone finds this quote from someone, just, you know, whatever. Um, I read, write, write, W-R-I-T-E, between the lines. And that to me means what is the character not saying? Those moments that prepare you for the next scene that gives texture to, and layers to a scene. I hold on to that. So like, kind of like what you said, the cut to transitions. Uh -uh. For me, it's if a, if a man and woman, you see the passion in them and they're saying, I want you with my eyes, but they're not saying it. And their body language and all that is talking about it. Woo! I'm ready to watch this next scene, right? So as writers, we don't always have to feel like we need to write everything out. I think like for me, writing between the lines means what, are, what am I saying without saying? And that to me is where the magic happens, where the moments of where people start to themselves fill in the gap for you. And all of a sudden, they're thinking it's going to go one way or, or their the serendipity drives them freaking nuts, you know? And now all of a sudden they're so excited because they just say you love her already, you know, <laughs> but, it, but you know, you won't let your character do it because you're just, you're letting the moment breathe and have breath. Those, oh, so that to me is such a golden thing that I read. So as a screenwriter myself, I, look for those moments in my story that give the person an anticipation for the next scene. It, it is my cut to. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, Mags, listen, anybody that's listening to this, I want to thank Maggie Bush for hanging out mm. with us today. I thank you for your time and your consideration. Um, before we go, Maggie, real quick where can we find you at yes and first and foremost thank you so much to darian get that film mechanics book y'all y'all need that structure just because you call yourself a writer don't mean you are you are in one aspect but there's two aspects of it you really need that technical piece that is really important um but thank you again and you can find me on instagram it's maggie m-a-g-g-i-e underscore bush um, you can also follow us on Instagram at, at E-Tray Productions, E-T-R-E Productions with an S. We post all of our stuff that we have going on on there. And I'm really so happy. I'm really happy that <laughs> you, know, you, you had opportunity, you had this opportunity to spend with us because a lot of times we hear writers, we know writers, right? We see writers, but what is their life really like? And I think you gave a fantastic overview of what your life really is like you know <laughs> um, you you be you know like because you there are moms out here who are you know writing and they're trying to find a time to write but yeah. back into that organization to that structure yeah. you know into discipline you know, discipline <laughs> I'm in my like, four and I'm in my 40s so for me like right I feel like I just now started to be in this prime of my life you know and so that also speaks to us 40 year old women and 50 year olds like it's not too late like yeah. just do what you gotta do ma'am sir we say don't give up maggie don't give up don't give up <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. so much maggie for joining us over at the film mechanic screenwriting podcast for everyone that's out there please, please stop by www.dairytitan.com and pick up a copy of the Film Mechanic Screenwriting Workbook, a screenwriting process that sells. This one is for you. Maggie, thanks again to everyone Thank else. You,
may you always be writing. Peace. We appreciate your support. Be sure to leave a review and a comment and share with your closest screenwriting friends. Stop by www.dairytitan.com for the Film Mechanic Screenwriting Workbook. And we'll see you next episode. Have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Peace.